single card. You know what? I I was gonna write on my phone, but then my girlfriend was like, "You can't go and do Good interviews on your phone," so she gave me one of her little thing oh. cards. <laughs> I wish there was just like a picture of yeah. like a willy on it or something. You know, just like that, that. just like a. It would have fit with all the all the craziness. Yeah, would have fit. Uh, congratulations on the film. Thank you. I really like this film. I wasn't expecting to, not in a nasty way, to like it as much oh, as I anticipated. Why? Uh, I don't know. It was very surprising as it went on. Okay. I think we can thank Barry for that. I think you can thank me for that. I can thank you for that, yes. <laughs> Good way to start the interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to begin by asking you about uh, the setting, the 2000s. It kind of took me back on a bit of a memory tour. Tough, like, with yeah. Blackberries and all those kind of things <laughs> and everything else. Um, putting it in that, I think you spoke about it before, but putting, putting it in that era, what did, it, what did it give you that maybe you wouldn't have got out of it if you'd set it in? modern modern times what was the kind of reason and why you thought it would work better that way totally well i think you know so much of it's part of, part of this sort of gothic country house literary and film tradition we have in this country which is like sort of bride's head and the go between and it's it's always starts with kind of usually a young man talking about a time you know summer that like changed his life forever so so i knew that the framing narrative had to be now, but we had to have the kind of bulk of the film set in at least the recent past. And 2007, 2006 slash seven um, felt perfect because 15 years ago seems to me to be the time that wherever you are in history is always lame. People always look terrible. It hasn't yet come back in fashion, but it's not, it's, yeah, it's, but it's not kind of so current that we can't have any um, there's no, you know, that we can't have enough distance. So it felt like it, you know, had this really humanising effect because you know a lot about this family from the fact that they're watching The Ring. You know, you know a lot about Felix because he has an embarrassing Carpe Diem tattoo and is wearing a Livestrong bracelet. You know, you, you the things that I think you're, it's much easier to sort of satirise, you know, to make, I guess, if it is a comedy of manners, which up to a point it is, I think it is easier to satirise things that they're not right now. It's hard to, you know, because we're, we're in this moment now and so we don't know, we're not, it's, it's not so easy to see clearly. Yeah, was there a thing from that period that you were very happy that you kind of snuck in? Was there something in the background? Um, have a Cheeky Christmas by the Cheeky Girls. Of course. Which <laughs> truly a good one. is a great Christmas song. <laughs> it is, I dare you not to listen Forget to it all of these at great Christmas. things when you look back. The right? Cheeky Girls. Mm -hmm. We tried to get Crazy Frog. Oh my God, that would have been... He's disappeared. Disappeared? I think something bad happened to him. I think it needs a Netflix <laughs> <Stop>. true crime documentary. <laughs> Stop. I think something's Stop. happened. Stop. 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 <laughs> did something to that frog. Well, he wasn't wearing any pants, remember? So maybe he just got in trouble. Yeah. But no, but actually the Cheeky Girls had ended up being a much... It's such a brilliant song. And I'd, I'd actually... I mean, it, it turned out to be by far the best thing because it's so hyper, hyper specific. And that's when it's fun. When yeah. Even if only two people and one of them is your sister get that reference it's <laughs> worth it um i've always read before directors talking over the you know over the years about the percentage of casting some people say it's like 70 percent is all about casting 90 percent of your job is all about oh. casting where i mean when you're casting something like this did you get your perfect cast was it a hard cast or did you did you find the experience because obviously imagine if i said no no they're all terrible i hate they're all terrible, <laughs> <laughs> they're all terrible. They're no all terrible. i didn't i wanted yeah yeah um it, they are absolutely my perfect cast. And I think, you know, that's partly because I don't write with a cast in mind because I just think each process of filmmaking, like whether it's writing or or, or prep or, or, you know, filming and then editing, all of them are so specific. You kind of can't really think ahead to the next one or, or you have to be careful with the way you do so. But I'd seen Barry in everything and I just thought he was just exceptional and so he was sort of the first person um that we asked but then it was just like this joyful obviously I wanted like I mean Rosamond and Richard um and the fact that they agreed to do it and just made it so much I mean just just so so much better they're just so brilliant but then it was also the like excitement of finding people that like you weren't familiar with so there's like Jacob I I met and really really liked him um and but I wasn't familiar with his work and then he came into audition and he just did this he did exactly what he did in, did in the film which is he was Felix he was just this like normal guy you know normal guy and he had this charm that it was impossible no matter how much we anticipate we won't like him 
we just love him. Mm. And then, you know, Carmel Cochran, who's the brilliant, brilliant casting director, she introduced me to Archie and to Alison, who play Farley and Venetia. And, you know, they're just so brilliant. And it's that combination. It's that kind of, yeah, it's the combination of people you're familiar with and not familiar with. And also the kind of, the what the audience, the kind of, yeah, the, the audience also has a relationship with actors and they have, um, you know, they anticipate certain things. So there's that kind of fun too. You can, yeah, you can sort of push and pull people's expectations. Yeah. I think my time's run, about to wrap up, but I have to say, I think you've got the best, do they call it a pin drop? Is it music? Is it a pin drop with the, the music? Uh, what where do they call so, it? They call it a not not mic drop. drop? Mic drop? Yeah, there's a, there's a moment in there. Needle like, drop. Needle drop. Thank needle you drop. in the back of the room. I think you have the best needle drop of the year. Go on. Uh, in this film, but I kind of don't want to spoil it for okay. people because I think you know where it comes. Oh, I see. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're <laughs> not talking say, about Cheeky Christmas. I'm not talking about Cheeky Christmas, no. If there was an Oscar for Needle Drop this year, you would win hands down. That's oh, what I'm going to say for that you. moment. I don't I'll want to spoil it, but I can't spoil award. it for people because it comes with extra, yeah, 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 it extra comes things. With, <laughs> yeah, it comes with items. It comes with baggage. Yeah. <laughs> it comes with baggage, literally. Uh, Thank I love the film. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys. <laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, 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 that's what they all say. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys.